Hey there. Well, dear children of God, good morning. Good to be with you, and uh, especially during this Advent season. Uh, remember, we have started preparing for Christmas, and Advent really means coming. We're celebrating the coming of Jesus, his being born into the world, and looking forward to his return, his second coming, when he'll take us as his people, his sheep, to be with him for eternity. Uh, and so we've got all kinds of things in our sanctuary in preparation for that. You see some of the, the poinsettias back there. You see the nativity scene, and maybe you even have one of those in your home. Just kind of getting ready and excited to celebrate Christmas and give thanks for the gift of Jesus and the life he gives us. Uh, so in preparation for that, we started several weeks ago reading the account of the first Christmas and God keeping his promise from way back in the Garden of Eden that he would send a Savior who would fix things, make us new again. Uh, so let's see, what we've heard from Luke chapter 1 so far is the angel Gabriel going to Zechariah and telling him that he and his wife Elizabeth would have a baby that would be John the Baptist. Uh, after that, we heard how Gabriel went to Mary and told her that she would have a baby who would be Jesus, God's son, the savior of the world. Last week, we heard how Mary, who was pregnant with Jesus, went and visited her relative Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist. And when Mary showed up there, the baby leapt in Elizabeth's womb. It, it was jumping and wiggling in there, so excited that the savior had come. Even by the Holy Spirit's power in Elizabeth's womb, John the Baptist recognized Jesus as Savior and Lord. So this week, we continue with that account from Luke chapter 1, and we're going to hear about the birth of John the Baptist, that child promised to Zechariah and to Elizabeth, that child who would grow up to have an important job, to speak God's word and get people ready for Jesus, for their Savior, the Messiah. So several words you're going to hear today. Uh, the first one is mercy. And God's mercy means that we don't get what we deserve. Instead of punishing us for our sins, he gives us forgiveness and he shows his love and kindness to us. That's mercy. Uh, prophesied. Prophecy has to do with speaking God's word about what's happening now, but also sometimes in the future. And so here, prophesied talks about the Old Testament people whom God spoke through to tell what would happen uh, when Jesus eventually would come. Redeemed is similar to another R word, rescued. Right? So in Christ, we are redeemed, we are rescued from sin and death and the devil. The prophets, well, that's connected with the word prophesied or prophecy. Those are the people who spoke God's word, his prophecies. And salvation is another word. Salvation is related to the word saved or saving. And so through Jesus, we are saved again from our sins and from death and the devil. So being redeemed is connected with the idea of salvation, rescue and saving. All right, let's hear about the birth of John from Luke chapter 1 today. The time came. Elizabeth gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard about the Lord's mercy to her. On the eighth day, they came to rejoice. They would have called the baby Zechariah, but you remember, God had a different plan for what the baby's name should be. They were going to call him Zechariah because that was his father's name. But his mother said, no, he shall be called John. They said to her, wait a minute, none of your relatives is called by this name. Then they made signs to Zechariah. He still could not speak. Remember, Gabriel had told him, because you don't believe me, the word I'm bringing from God, you won't be able to speak until the baby's born. So Zechariah couldn't talk, but they asked him what he wanted the baby to be called. Zechariah asked for a writing tablet, not an electric tablet like some of you have these days. This would have been like a piece of wood with something to scratch on at that time. Zechariah wrote, his name is John. Hmm. And they all wondered. Right away, Zechariah spoke, and he blessed God. All these things were talked about through all the hill country. 
everyone who heard them said, what will this child be? You know, they recognized this was something special that happened. Zechariah and Elizabeth were old. They hadn't had any children. All of a sudden now, when they're in their old age, God gives them a child. And people think, hey, something's going on here. God's working to do something. Zechariah, now that he could talk again, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord. He has visited his people. He has redeemed his people. He spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets. He said, we should be saved from our enemies. Then we being saved might serve him without fear. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord. You will prepare the way for him. You will make known salvation to his people. You will tell about the forgiveness of sins. For the tender mercy of our God will give light to those who sit in darkness. God will guide our feet in the way of peace. After this, John grew. He became strong in spirit. And when he was older, he lived in the wilderness. Wow, so Zechariah, so joyful that they have this child. But not only that, he recognizes that the true joy is the purpose of their child, John, that he'll get people ready for the Messiah. And, and you heard all those wonderful things that the Messiah will do, that he will save the people from their enemies, that he'll be a prophet of the Most High, that he'll bring salvation to his people and bring forgiveness of sins, even to those who are in darkness. And we know that that good news is for us, too. We need Jesus just as much as God's Old Testament people Israel did. And Jesus has come for all of us to be our Savior. Zechariah says here, too, God will guide our feet in the way of peace. And you know what? I think that's pretty neat that that song concludes with talking about peace because this is the second week of Advent. And if you have an Advent wreath at home, at least the way that I've learned it, the weeks start with the first candle reminding us of hope, and then the second week, the focus is on peace. That peace that we have in Jesus Christ, who didn't stay a baby, but who grew up, and then who suffered and, and died for our sins and rose again to give us life. Because of all that Jesus has done, being incarnate and, and becoming a, a human being and his mother Mary to being born to suffering and dying and rising again because of all of that we truly can have peace now and eternally all right so we're going to add that verse to our song this week light one candle remember we sang last week light one candle for hope because Jesus fulfills that hope that we have the years of waiting for him uh, he also is our peace. So today, we'll add that second verse as well. Light one candle for peace. We'll start with the verse of hope, and then we'll add the verse for peace after that. Light one candle for hope. One bright candle for hope. He brings hope to every he comes, he comes. Light one candle for peace, one bright candle for peace. He brings peace to everyone, he comes, he comes. And so I Pray that Jesus can be for you this Christmas season, both your hope and your peace. And we'll add some more things to that song as we go along the next couple weeks. Before we close today, why don't we go ahead and have a prayer. If you would bow your heads, close your eyes, I'll fold your hands, I'll speak some words and you can say them after me. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent John to tell people that Jesus was coming. 
to forgive their sins. Thank you, Father, for all the people who tell me that Jesus loves me and can forgive all the wrong things I think or say or do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thank you for spending this time with me today, and the Lord Jesus be with you this week.